Hello there. The hair is gone, in a very real sense, and I'm back for this week's Paper Rom, with some big stories too. Big stories. First up, it's Spain and the tumultuous Copa del Rey clash between Barcelona and Real Madrid on uh, Tuesday night. 3-1, of course, is finished to Real. You might think this is just one Spanish giant beating another Spanish giant, but you'd be wrong, because coming just a week after Barcelona's Champions League defeat to Milan, it's nothing less, as as confidently announced, than the end of an era. Have that and that, says Ass's front page, which actually went round the back. So excited were they about the result. Madrid dancing on Barcelona's tomb, says the paper. The uh, Nationals were at it too. Let's see, here's ABC with It's a Coup d'etat in Barcelona. La Razón, whose byline uniquely is We Like Spain, say Cristiano shuts up the new camp and La Vanguardia uh, it's the debacle of an impotent Barcelona. Well, Marker, who dedicated more than half of Wednesday's edition to the match, say it's a romp. Uh, Cristiano is new camp hero. He always was, Marker. He always was. But interesting to note that uh, for once, Ronaldo upstaging his tiny rival, Leo Messi, with a performance so outstanding, featuring indeed more shots than the entire Barcelona team combined, that even the Catalan press had to say, this Portuguese fellow, he's pretty good. Well, a few more headlines. Marker again the next day. Heroes of the Reconquista, when of course the Castilians kicked out the Moors, of course. While Ass go with Mu as St. George. They hired him to slay the Catalan dragon, says the paper, and he's done it. Some interesting references there. Funny thing is, though, of course, that this very Saturday, said dead dragon will be facing Madrid all over again in yet another Classico, although in what state? Remains to be seen for while the Catalan press are insisting that psychologically another game with Real is the best thing possible. We've got to get back on our feet, say Sport. Their confidence looks shaken not just in the side, but also in stand-in boss Jordi Rora. Widespread view that while Madrid have a manager, Barcelona, with Pep's stand-in stand-in, don't. Why don't they learn from their mistakes, asks Sport. Why is there no spark? Why did David Villa come on so late? Well, fellow Catalans El Mundo Deportivo are having none of that. We are all, Rora, they declared the next morning. I bet you are after 3-1. Remember, says the paper, a year ago, Jordi was just third in line in the coaching staff, barely even featuring in the team photos. Now he finds himself sat on the bench while his boss and, let's not forget, best friend, Tito Villanova, battles cancer. Before Christmas, when we heard about Villanova's illness, all fans agreed that the priority was the life of their manager. It seems that that has all been forgotten in the heat of battle. Right, well, no, no Cheryl Cole jokes about what's the similarity between Barcelona and X Factor America. Uh, they both have poor results with a Geordie Rora. And instead, let's head off to Italy, where, of course, Maurizio Zamperini has binned another manager. I would explain that it's now uh, Giampiero Gasparini coming back in to replace Alberto Malassani, the man who'd replaced him, 19 days earlier, except by now it's probably changed anyway. So instead, here's Gazetta's lovely tribute on Tuesday to the 43 managerial victims of mad Maurizio Zamperini in his 26 years in football. Figures correct at the time of recording. Now, the other big news this week in Italy was this man, Diego Maradona. Yes, ahead of Friday's huge top-of-the-table showdown in Serie A between Napoli and Juventus, El Pibe was back in Naples, seen of probably his greatest days. Gazetta have him here. I, Diego, and inside making the biggest Naples appearance in public since Janet Jackson at the Super Bowl, probably, addressing the crowds from a balcony and telling them, I am a Neapolitan, and urging kids to stay off the drugs too. Now, he hasn't been back much over the years to his adopted city, but that's largely thanks to Italy's financial police, who'd like him to lose a few pounds in a very real sense. They claim, indeed, that he owes them 40 billion euros in unpaid taxes, and on previous visits to Italy, they've hounded him, stripping him of his jewellery in a TV studio once, and even taking his watch off him. Mind you, as a player in Naples, he must be used to that. Well, Diego anyway reckons that the case can still be ironed out, and it even suggests here that he should be Napoli's next manager. As he explains, it's not like I've killed anyone. <laughs> Diego, you had them at hello. Well, elsewhere, let's conclude today with the week's other big antiquated footballer back in Europe story, David Beckham. Haven't you heard? Shy David slipped quietly back in under the radar last week, signing up for low-key French outfit Paris Saint-Germain 
only to find itself smack back in the limelight as PSG took on OM in Le Classique. And David, despite only playing the last 15 minutes, still got the front page of L'Equipe the next day after jumping on goal scorer Zlatan Ibrahimovic faster than Gerard Piquet. And Zlatan showing all the raw enthusiasm of a schoolboy cornered by his dowager aunt. Paris put OM on their knees, the headline there. Well, French TV gave David his very own dedicated camera for the match, the Bet Cam, they called it. But inside, a stunned Licky, revealing to their incredulous readers that on Angleterre, TV channel ESPN, a préféré showing Le Derby de Milan live instead of this. Even the pubs of Manchester preferred Balotelli in the Derby with Inter rather than their old Mancunian hero's Parisian debut. Gosh, it's almost as if he's 38 and doesn't actually matter. Well, the two sides are met again, of course, this Wednesday, 2-0 again, the scoreline for Paris Saint-Germain. This time, no cover for David, who uh, made his first start in the match. The headline there, uh, Ibra gives OM a bloody nose, but plenty of Beckham coverage inside. Le Keep talking about all the good touches from Beckham. It was his first real test, they say, and he passed it with flying colours. Passed, indeed, and passed and passed more than any player on the field. Le Keep gave him 6 out of 10 in their ratings. Joey Barton, who was also playing, of course, got a lowly four, largely for making fun of Ibra's nose. Dick Barton. Well, with that, we'll come to the end of uh, this week's paper review. There's Champions League back next week, so no doubt loads of excitement from the Continental Press. Hopefully, you'll be joining us for that.